bless him for his goodness. We bless him for his faithfulness and his mercies. Today we want to continue <coughs> in his word and in prayer. And briefly, uh, I would like to share with us a few scriptures in the book of Joel. And we want to title to today's uh, sharing, Restoring the Lost Years. Restoring the Lost Years. And I'll take it from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 12 to 29. You know, most of us are very familiar with the book of Joel, with the various encounters and the various depictions and narrations that the prophet shows about the situation of Judah and Israel. And so, before we come to the chapter 2, I just want to read a few verses in the chapter, introductory verse, introductory chapter, chapter 1. That's Joel chapter 1, verse 1 to, I think, verse 7. It says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel the son of Petuel, Hear this, O ye old men, and give ye all ye inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm had left had the locusts eaten, and that which the locusts had left had the cankerworm eaten, and that which the cankerworm had left had the caterpillar eaten. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he had the cheek teeth of a great lion. He had laid my vine waste, and packed and packed my fig tree. He had made it clean bare, and cast it away, and the branches thereof are made white. Hallelujah. I just want to give a bit, a little background or. Uh, intro on the book of Joel. The book of Joel basically is a call to God's people to repent and turn to him so that they can experience the forgiveness and restoration of God in light of the promises of a future blessing and salvation. Joel used natural images like the sun, moon, the grass, the locusts, the vine, and the rest, to express the mind of God and to depict the images or imaginations to express what he actually wants to tell about the situations of Israel. The visions that this Joel talked about basically is to awaken the church from our spiritual sleep and complacency and to bring us to a place of restoration, that which God had planned for his people. It also tells us about the mind of God, how God is willing to forgive his people when the people repent, and to restore his people to where he originally wants them to be. It talks about the heart and the character of God, that he is a God of restoration. That also a very important thing that our past cannot hold us from God's blessings. And finally, <coughs> the book also tells us about the coming. It depicts about the coming of the Messiah, the end time, the coming of Christ, and what the church needs to do to prepare people from not facing the impending judgment that God has for all those that do not receive him 
or all those that do not get connected to God not to face so that they will not face the wrath of God that is ahead of his people. We want to take the key verses for today, the chapter two, verse twelve to twenty nine, the restoration that God has for his people. You look at the levels of destruction and level of despair that the people of Israel went into because they were complacent, because they they were asleep spiritually, they lost touch with the things of God. And the prophet Joel, during his dispensation, came, gave a vivid narration with what was prevailing and what was the situation in the people of Israel at that time, using the locusts, the palm worms, using the farm, uh, farm, farm, uh, what do you call it, scenario, to paint a vivid picture for the people to understand the situation they are in. And the call for repentance, where he called for repentance in sad clothes and in prayers and fastings for that massive restoration that God had intended for his people. And it was in this same chapter 2 that the great prophecy that was fulfilled from the beginning of Acts chapter 2, Joel chapter 2.28, was also spoken or prophesied. In the book of Joel. So Joel chapter 2 verse 12 says that therefore also now says the Lord. Turn ye even to me with your heart. And with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness. And repented him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth in his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the hidden should rule over them. Wherefore shall they say among the people, Where is their God? Verse 18, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therein, therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far from you, from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his sink shall come up, and his ill savour shall come up, because he had done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, and the canker worms, and the caterpillar, and the palm worms, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that had dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. 
And he shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Praise the Lord. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and my sons and my daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour my spirit. We thank God for his word. His word of restoration that God has installed for us. We, we, we are in a dispensation and we are in a generation that the church, the body of Christ, is expected to do more because of how things are going and how nations and communities, the, uh, 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 the enemy is having a lot of foothold and a lot of entrenchment in the nations. Nations are being taken over with Islamic agenda and all kinds of satanic agenda. Communities are being taken hold by all kinds of activities of the enemy. And the church is called upon more than ever before to arise and stand in the gap and execute the council, the mandate, and call the people to a place of total restoration, to a place where the church will, 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 will be directing and focusing the people onto the coming of Christ, will be directing and focusing the people onto what the church is expected to do in this end time. There are so many instances that are going on, the world economic situations, the world economic orders, how the Antichrist and how the enemy is putting a lot of things together to bring a lot of hardship and frustration in the system such that many will turn their back to God, such that many will not look for God, such that many will even say that is there even the need for God? What at all with our serving and with our worship and our calling upon the Lord done for us over the years? These are times of hardship. And these are times, and exact times, that was like in the time of Joel, that the Lord made him sound this alarm and blew this trumpet and called the people together to be aware and not to be complacent and not to sleep spiritually. The church, for many of us, we are so complacent and we think that because we know how to handle certain things and we, we know how to flow in certain things, we have become so complacent and what we are expected to do, we are not really working in it and not expressing the counsel of God in our workplace, in our communities, in, in, in wherever we find ourselves, in the nations, in the marketplace, and the rest. The church is being called upon in this time to come out of complacency and come out of our spiritual sleep or stupor and stand on our feet and come to the place where we we'll call the people into a place of restoration, into a place of awakening, into the place of great glory. Because God has installed for us great restoration. He says he will restore unto us the past things that we have years, the past years of glory, the things we have lost ground, we have lost touch with. He will restore unto us. He will restore unto us that which has been destroyed by the enemy in the past, that which we have lost because of a lack of our obedience and lack of negligence or because of some sins that we did, the Lord says if we call unto him, he will restore us and will turn us back to him and will give us more than enough than what we used to have or what we used to walk in and that the Lord will bring us to a place of abundance, the place of glory. It says that yet the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied. Therein I will no more make you a reproach among the hidden. That which has made the church a reproach, that which has made the people of God lost touch with the things of God, that which has made us not to be focused on letting the will of God be seen, that which has made us lost touch with the glories, the power, with the mind of God as a church in the nation and in the world at last. The Lord says that he will restore unto us abundance, resources, 
it will store unto us the glory, the anointings, that we will be satisfied therewith, and will no more be made a reproach among the hidden. And this is the prayer that I would like us to pray as we getting close, uh, as we we getting close to this sharing that. We're going to pray that the Lord will cause the church to come out of every complacency, out of everything. Because some of the stories one you hear, and some of the situations one you hear across the nations and things. So it's that I had one um, famous uh, pastor, one of the, uh, in one of sermons recently, that he was saying that look, it, it looks like the church has become so. Uh, religious, we have become so religious that the 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 effectual power, the, the reality that the church is supposed to bring to bear, people have become religious and not godly, that to the extent that there are so many churches in Africa, there are so many uh, uh, churches, but the level of impact that we are supposed to have compared to the other continents is like we haven't gotten to that level of impact. The level of economic impact, the level of uh, spiritual impact, the level of impact that we are supposed to have as a church, economic transformation and the rest, that the continent is supposed to have, we are not getting there yet. And if it talks of, we are talking about industrialization, we are talking of great transformation and the rest, most of this Western civilization and the rest, most of the transformation began with the church revolutions and the rest. And it is time for Africa to also get into that place that the church will lead this move, that the church will lead this revolution, that the church will lead this impact, that indeed the church will lead this agenda that will have Christian businesses, we have Christian uh, conglomerates, we have Christian uh, empires, we have Christian-led um, industries that will bring great transformation and will not be said that the great people that are doing great things in the continent are not Christians. It doesn't tell us, it doesn't make us, if I'll put it this way, it doesn't make us accepted. It doesn't make people uh, long to even seek the God that they will say we are always making noise of and we are always making all this uh, religiosity about. I don't know if I'm putting the picture clear, but we, we, the church relevance should be seen and not to be seen the negatives, not to outweigh the positives. So we want to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Lord's restoration will come upon the church, will come upon our lives as individuals, that will become relevant, that will become relevant wherever we find ourselves in, that the religiosity will give way to true godliness, that the religiosity will give way to true a godliness where we will lead the people of God into total restoration and total impact. That will have leaders that indeed will profess as Christians and not just live service. They will say something and they will do something different. We will not have that level of leadership in our nations, in our communities. But we have Christian leaders that will say what they mean and mean what they say. That will have Christian leaders in the families, Christians in the workplace, Christians in the marketplace. That will walk the will of God. We have so many challenges that people are saying so many things against the church. Because we have all these leaders that say they are Christian and they are, they are Christians and they do something different from what the Bible tells us to do. And that is the burden for us this morning. And that is the burden as I read the scripture of Job. That is the burden that comes unto me. That we should pray. We should pray for the church. We should pray for ourselves. That indeed, if all of us that profess to be Christians indeed want the Bible and talk the Bible and do the will of God, most of the excesses and most of the abnormalities in the place will be silenced and then we'll see a rise of true Christian leadership. We'll see a rise of true Christian transformation. We'll see a rise of true Christian transformation, economic transformation and continental transformation. We'll see a rise of 
true hope for the people that they will say that yes indeed there is hope in the continent when he go to UK and the rest now UK is almost taken over by Islam I don't know if you you've been there recently you almost about 10 or something mayors are Muslims and a, a lot of things are going on a nation that is so strong in Christian foundation and order the church needs to arise. We need to arise more than ever before and stand and let the relevance of the church be seen. We want to pray briefly. He said, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should not rule over them. Whereof should they say among the people, where is their God? That's the verse 17 of chapter 2. Then the Lord, then would the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therein. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Verse 21. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the flour shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with the wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years of the lost that the locust has eaten, and the canker worms, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worms, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty. And this is talking about total restoration, abundance, spiritual, social, economic, emotional, in the realm of the soul, physical restoration. We want to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the church will restore the church, the, the Lord will restore the church, will make, take us out of every complacency and bring us to a place of spiritual alertness that the church in this nation, the body of Christ in the continent of Africa, the body of Christ in the nations will be on a red alert and begin to understand the times and seasons we are in and that the church will not be a mockery, that people will not ask where is their God in our lives as individuals, in our families, in our churches, in the nation, people will not say, and where is the God of Ghana? And where is the God of social and so family? And where is the God of social and so? When people begin to ask that question, then it means we have become a reproach, we have become a mockery, we are not doing what we are expected to do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to pray that the Lord will cause a stirring in our lives, in the church, in the nations of the continent of Africa, and the nations of the body of Christ, that the church will arise out of every sleep, the church will arise, and the God will restore us, that the Lord will bring us to great restoration, great power, great abundance, that we will be able to walk in His will and His counsel, we will let religiosity give way to true godliness, that people will see, as was said of the church, they saw them and they said, that, like, these people are being with Christ because their lifestyle was a depiction of Christ. We want to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, that the Lord will restore the church in the name of Jesus. Father, we present ourselves before you as individuals, as a family, collectively as a church, even as a nation and a continent, we present before you, O God, that you will bring us to that place of alertness and let every form of complacency give way and let us stand as true Christians in the land in wherever we find ourselves let true Christian leadership emerge let people that are true Christians speak and talk the talk of Christ and walk the walk of Christ and not just say something and do something otherwise cause us Lord to come to that place of power and glory to exhibit your counsel to exhibit Bit your will to exhibit your mind, O oh God. Let the church arise out of every sleep and out of every slumber and out of every stupor. And let the church arise and stand on our feet and exemplify Christ 
wherever we show, let the light of the Lord be shown through us in this dark and perverse generation. Let the light of God, let the glory of God emanate and radiate through the church. Let great transformation, great leadership, great, great revolution arise out of the body of Christ in the continent of Africa that we will arise with great power. We will arise with great mind. Let the true revival emanate out of our lives, out of our family, out of the church. And let us indeed show the way the way to the light, the way to great transformation, the, great, the way to great restoration, that you through the church will restore the nations of Africa, will restore our families. You through the believers will bring restoration to lives and to people, that there will be true restoration in our communities, that there will be true restoration in our homes, that there will be true restoration in our workplaces. Father, we give you praise, Lord. Cause us to arise out of every complacency and cause us, Lord, to arise out of every sleep and every slumber and cause us to arise and let your light shine, O oh God. We pray for grace. We pray for oil. We pray for anointing. We pray for strength. We pray for divine enablement as individuals, as a church, as a body of Christ, that we will indeed show the way to great restoration, that nations will be on track in the will of the law, that the enemy will not have control and dominance over the nations, but the church will lead the course, the body of Christ will lead the course in righteousness, in great glory, and in great power. We thank you. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We magnify your holy name. And to you be praised, Lord. We thank you for the great awakening and the great restoration and the great stirring that you are bringing into the body of Christ for this end time move of yours. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.